public instead. Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? The women with the least likelihood of getting pregnant are the ones most worried about having abortions. On January 6th of 2021, you had tens of thousands of people peacefully protesting. So, it's not a right-wing conspiracy theory. It's not QAnon. It's real. <laughs> I want to welcome Elaine Kmark to the enemies list today. Uh, Elaine is one of these really smart people about how things work and how they don't in American politics. She served in the Clinton White House, uh, particularly on something that that I thought at the time was kind of important, and I think it it did some good work. And we sort of, as a country, whether it was anybody else, Bush or Obama or Trump, after that kind of let it drop, which was the reinventing government to like look at how things work and don't work in government. Um, but Elaine's also very smart about how American primary politics work. And, and you know, I, I think you were getting a lot of folks who were asking you questions earlier in the year about like, what happens if Joe Biden steps down? What happens if there's a, you know, a Democratic primary, which I was always very short on those things. Um, but, you know, it's interesting that the Republican primary is technically over, but it doesn't actually seem to be over quite yet, does it? I mean, we still seem to have a sort of bubbling of Nikki Haley voters out there. So, well, like I said, welcome to the show. I want to just talk to you about a couple things. And first off, like, where do you see the state of the race and American politics right now? I, I think it's very unclear. Mm. OK, on the one hand, you have all these polls showing Donald Trump very close, um, and in some states, some swing states even leading. Mm -hmm. Although since the State of the Union, those polls have closed, and now it looks like a neck and neck. Right. The, some of these polls are faulty. Some mm -hmm. of them have very small sample sizes. Yes. Some of them people think are over sampling Trump voters. Um, in order to not make the same kinds of mistakes they made in 2016 when they undersampled uh, Trump right. voters. I mean, you know, so so you've got the polling world over here. Let's put it over in one basket. Okay. Then you've got another basket, which said, which is what I call the more more of the plate tectonics of politics basket. Yes. Okay. The, the what are the fundamentals, right? Mm -hmm. And the fundamentals on the uh, pro-Trump side are the persistent overhang of inflation and the yes. fact that inflation is a different kind of economic problem because everybody feels it every day. They feel it in groceries. They feel mm -hmm. it in gas. Mm -hmm. it, and so even though all the other economic indicators are terrific, okay, and people have jobs, we are at full employment. It's yep. amazing the job growth. Uh, wages have actually gone up. But Which wages is, haven't gone up in enough to offset the inflation, right. so people don't really appreciate it. So on the Trump side, I'd say we're looking at a lot of polls that look very good for him, and we're looking at inflation. After right. that, however, you got to look at the plate tectonics. Mm -hmm. And the plate tectonics say there were 7 million people, more people who voted for Biden than voted for Trump. Uh, four years ago. And it's hard to imagine what will move those people into the Trump column. Right. They're, they're mm -hmm. mad. You know, they say, oh, Donald, uh, Joe Biden's too old, this, that, and the other thing. Hard to imagine some of you voted for Biden four years ago, suddenly deciding they're going to vote for Trump, particularly with all of the problems that Trump has. Right. And there you look at really one overarching issue. Trump has never tried from the time he was in the White House through this campaign. He has never tried to expand his base. He only mm -hmm. talks to his base. And the base loves his out the outrageous things he says. Mm -hmm. They like the fact that he's a tough guy, et cetera, et cetera. But most presidential candidates while they're president and when they're running again, try to expand their base. He has never tried to expand right. the base. Right. It's interesting that you say that because I mean the 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 
the both Bill Clinton and Karl Rove did a base plus uh, for, for George W. Bush in the first election, did a base plus strategy. They knew they had to expand outside yeah. of the box. Both sides right. of the aisle knew they had to get outside of that box. And it is interesting. Uh, you know, Jonathan Martin had an interesting piece this morning, like why isn't Joe Biden reaching out to more Republicans, which I think is a, a legitimate question right now. Yeah. Um, he's sort of been trying to like pin down the base. And I, I get that. I understand that that incentive inside inside an election. Um, but I, I do think there's a bigger uh, I mean, look at the Lincoln Project. We do this because, you know, we believe this fundamentally. There's a bigger opportunity for Joe Biden to get Republican voters this time, I think, than there was in 2020. I think the, 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 the pool has expanded, right? Yeah. All you have to do is look at the last election night and look mm -hmm. at Nick, Nikki Haley's withdrawal. Right. Biden was out in a nanosecond yep. saying she ran a good campaign. Welcome. Right. Biden mm -hmm. made an overt plea for her voters, which which makes sense. And what did Trump do? Trump insulted her voters right. first by calling them a bunch of lefties. We're not, and, and you're not welcome here. <laughs> you're not welcome, right? Um, and and insulting her. Now, the, it, it couldn't be more a more stark example of what's going to go on in this presidential election, mm -hmm. right? Um, because a lot of people think that Trump, while his base is rock solid, um, and and enthusiastic mm -hmm. that his base is somewhere be between 45 and 47 percent. Yeah. And where that 45 and 47 percent vote makes a big difference. Right. Sure. What we saw with the Republican primaries is there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 percent of Republican voters. And I'm averaging here mm -hmm. yeah. um, who will not vote for Donald Trump. Yep. And the question now is, are they going to stay home? They got to leave the top of the ticket blank because you can do that. You can vote for the down ballot, sure. Republicans on the down ballot, not vote at the top. Or are some of them going to go for Biden? And given the there are two states, Arizona and Georgia, where the Biden margin was very, very small. It was five digits. It was right. 10,000 and 11,000. Um, in those two states, a couple of um, twenty percent of Haley voters voting for Biden, that could be the, that could deliver the state. Yeah. Oh, well, if 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 you end up with, I mean, look, and she uh, she ranged from fourteen percent, which was the Florida number, to fifty percent in Vermont. If if you end up even with ten or fifteen percent of those uh, uh, for for uh, that, that are willing to even consider a move um, in Arizona, Wisconsin, or Michigan, I think yep. it makes I think it makes Trump's path very, very narrow at that point. It does. It absolutely does. I think there's a second thing, again, going back to sort of the basics of the election or the mm -hmm. plate tectonics, which is that Trump's vote was an older vote. Absolutely. Um, 65 and plus, where, where that mm -hmm. was his demographic. Mm -hmm. Older and in rural places. So it helped him in the electoral college because of the rural states have a right. more electoral college votes than they should, according to population. So his electoral college vote was was kind of a fluke because of that. His older base means, just not to be ghoulish about it, not many of them will be around in 2024. Mm -hmm. um, Biden's base was very young. And while Biden's young base is mad at him about things like right. um, like Hamas, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, the fact is the one thing we know about young voters is that as they get older, they vote more. And they don't tend to disappear from the electorate the way older voters do, i.e. Right. they don't die. Um, and so you've got a you've got just just those fundamentals. I would guess that there are more Biden voters still around than there are Trump voters. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, I will say this in Florida. I know this because it's my home turf. You can count on a four percent turnover of senior voters every single year. Sure, that's and just they're, they're 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 going to turn over. It is not mm -hmm. it's not an optional formation. That, you know, demographics and, <laughs> and actuarial tables do what they do. <laughs> right, exactly, and that is not the case for younger voters. Right, right, and and I think. I do think you. I do think you're right. There is a there is a little restiveness among younger voters with Joe Biden right now. 
Um, they're a little bit angry. They're a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, uh, yeah. they're 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 pissed off about uh, Israel and Gaza, Hamas and Palestine. All those questions rolled up. But I mean, I st- I still have a fundamental belief that by the time the election gets closer, and younger voters do tend to engage a little later, I yeah. still believe that by the time we get there, it's going to be very difficult to find younger voters who are. Like, well, you know, Donald Trump is a much better option for me as a younger person than than Joe Biden. I just I have so much trouble believing that that's going to be the case. Yeah. I mean, look, it, it wasn't the case in two past elections that had Donald Trump in them in 2016 and 2020. He lost big time among yeah. younger voters. So and and this the single issue that seems to be driving younger voters into a more skeptical stance about Biden is the war in Israel. And the Mm -hmm. problem there is what they don't know yet, but I'm assuming the Biden campaign will uh, use some of its $155 million to tell them, is that when it comes to the Middle East, um, Trump has been much, much more aggressive Oh, sure. Totally behind Netanyahu, Mm -hmm. much less sympathetic to the Palestinians. And it's not if that is your issue and you're putting Biden next to Trump, you're going to end up with Biden because he is he is calling for a ceasefire. As you know, the United States abstained in the last United Nations meeting Mm -hmm. on this. And and as we know, um, Biden is really pissed off at Netanyahu. For the yes. way he's conducting the war, so if you and and by the way, Trump has been very silent on this. He has not come uh-huh. to the aid of. Isn't his that interesting? He's been Trump. very, he's very nervous anything. about saying a word about it. Right, but I'm sure that there are people in the Biden campaign who are dredging up old TV clips of uh, Donald Trump's comments about Netanyahu, mm-hmm. et cetera, and that um, with some of that money that they've been raising they'll make sure that young people know what the difference is right right and and i do think i do think that's one thing we can't overlook here there is so much money uh, there's such a money differential right now in the two campaigns and i and i and i i tell people this a lot not every money counts in in huge ways not in the way that it might have been uh, you know 25 years ago but it still really counts for a lot and and right now Joe Biden is outgunning Donald Trump on every single financial axis, not just by a little, but by a lot. Yeah, that's right. That, that That's right. And, you know, the money isn't going to, the money differential isn't going to change the Trump base. After all, no, everybody no. knows everything there is to know about Donald Trump. But the money is important for that sliver of the electorate that mm-hmm. is yet to make up their minds or is new to the electorate. And that's where the money's going to really matter. Yeah, I think that's right. And folks, folks coming in, you know, and it used to be this sort of luxury in America where we didn't have to worry about politics every day. And people, mm-hmm. I, I think people miss that, but I yeah. do believe we're going to end up in a situation where people that are late engagers on this are, they're going to fall into two categories. They've either deliberately been looking away, which I, I'm fine with. I get it. I get why one would. Yeah. Um, I get it. But but or or they're going to see this at at the moment of decision and say, "I can't deal with the chaos. I I just mm-hmm. can't do it. I can't face the chaos." And yeah. and I think that's going to be. I think the chaos is something that offsets a lot of Biden's smaller. Not not insignificant, not inconsequential, but smaller problems. You know, is Biden a little more boring than Trump? Absolutely. I think Absolutely. people might like that in the end. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, are there is his base a little restive? Yeah. Do they, do they want the best to be the enemy of the good? Of course they do. But right. you know, uh, so let me ask you another question: Where do you see the third party shenanigans going on right now? I feel that no labels is about to basically roll over. They they've 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 lost one of their key leaders with the passing of of, of, of Senator Lieberman, um, and they can't seem to get a candidate for their ticket. Um, where do you see RFK and No Labels playing into this election? Um, I agree with you. I think No Labels is finished. I think no one will run 
on them. They've only yeah. got on a ballot on 19 states. They right. had previously said they'd be on the ballot in mm -hmm. 30 states. Um, it, not being on the ballot in all states means you are a spoiler, ipso facto. Correct. You, cannot, you simply cannot win. And their 19 states don't add up to 270 electoral college votes. Mm -hmm. So you simply can't win. And I think everybody who's looked at this is, has said, well, you know, uh, they talked a good game, but, you know, the kind of money, you know, when they went out, when they announced months ago, they said they were going to raise $70 million. Right. Well, that sounds like a lot of money to most people. Um, if you study presidential campaigns and presidential nominating campaigns, $70 million is bupkis. It's right. nothing. Okay. Right. It is absolutely nothing. It's, it's so, pocket change. It really, really is nothing. I mean, the two national parties spend vastly more on that just running their nomination process. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just running their primaries and running their convention, et cetera, Absolutely. vastly more than that. So um, I think that people are looking at this and saying, no, you, this, this dog don't hunt. Um, Kennedy's, um, Kennedy's challenge is a little bit more serious. First of all, he's getting, he's got the name recognition and he's built on that name recognition. Mm -hmm. Um and he's he's really gets some uh, an, enough in the polls that he could be, definitely be a spoiler. Right. He, however, is not on many state ballots, but the two he's on are two of the big ones. Yep. It's Arizona and Georgia. Arizona and Georgia. Um, he's he's not on you know he's on the Utah state ballot. Well, Utah's not going to go Democratic. Okay. Eh, no, trust me on this one. <laughs> yeah. Right. We can we can bet on that. Um, so. What is worrisome about Kennedy is that um, in key in a couple of swing states, he could take votes from Biden. That's right. the assumption. The assumption is he'll take votes from Biden mm -hmm. because of his environmental past, because of his name, et cetera. However, there are people who insist that um, because of his anti-vax positions, which are right. shared by a lot of conservatives, that he might take vote for, votes from Trump, too. I think that's the case. I, I, I think that a lot of the, like the crypto stuff, the conspiracy stuff, and the anti-vax stuff, that seems to me to be very aligned with yeah. a lot of Trump voters. Right. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I keep being reminded of a little piece I read about his appearance before the Libertarian Party convention. Mm -hmm. back in California. This was about two months ago. Right. And what was fascinating about it is that, you know, libertarian, getting on the libertarian line, by the way, would be very helpful because sure. the party they're, is in, they're in all California. 50 states. They're on all 50 states. So that would have solved, that would have solved his problems right then and there. However, what happened was when he appeared before them and, and the delegates there started looking at him, they said, wait a minute, this guy's been for big government. This guy started out as an environmentalist. He's been for all sorts of environmental regulation. We don't like him. Okay. Right. So it's, 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 it, it, he's, he's kind of a weird combination of very conservative stuff, the, the crypto and the anti-vax mm -hmm. and very mm -hmm. liberal stuff, which is his environmental background. So who knows who he'll take from, <laughs> but he is doing, but he is doing much better than Cornell West or Jill Stein. I'm sure. Who, invisible yeah i think jill stein is basically like a spent force i think the green stuff just uh, yeah the, there were an uh, there i think enough progressives after 2016 realized that indulging jill stein is why we didn't get hillary clinton that's especially exactly in wisconsin right. and you know with, yeah with and her. you know and and the fact is that under biden you have this the inflation reduction reduction act really should have been called the climate change act I sure. mean, that was the biggest amount of money and the biggest move towards, um, you know, funding anti-fossil uh, fuels that we've ever seen. So it's right. hard to imagine that serious environmentalists would waste their vote on the Green Party. Yeah, I think I think you, you I think we've ended up in the point where where the third party numbers that unless it's an RFK, a third party candidate now they are going to fall into that two three percent category tops they're not going to make a bigger i think impact than they than they since people are beginning to understand the existential nature of 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 you know what it means if you if you spoil it and then look that's why chris christie rejected and everybody else is rejected yeah. their labels are like i don't want that to be on my permanent record no. i don't want to be the guy who who got who got donald trump elected because 
I went on a third party ballot and and peeled enough votes away. But I think you're right. I think I think Stein and 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 West have basically become invisible, and that that I don't think that's a bad thing at this point. By the way. But let me just point out to the audience, Brookings runs a, we run something called the Presidential Tracker, and we update it every week. And you can, you can go on there and you can see how these five candidates now are doing in terms of media mentions, social media mentions, and money. And it's, it's just interesting to, to watch them that way. That, oh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll 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 try to post that in the, in the, in the, on the video feed for this one, uh, when we wrap this up. But um, yeah, and, and so where do you see that right now? Uh, wh- how are Clinton and, and Biden stacking up in that? I mean, Donald Trump is like a like a black hole of media attention, obviously. Yes. <laughs> um, but it, not all of it is is good media attention, obviously. Right. Well, I, that 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 I think may be contributing to the poll numbers. I think people who are not very familiar with politics they hear about Trump, Trump, Trump all the time. Right. So when they haven't really paid any attention and then don't really know who's running, but boy, they hear about Trump 10 times a day because, of, and, and they hear good stuff and bad stuff. And they just say Trump because it's the name that they've mm-hmm. heard most recently. Um, I, I think that he sucks all the air out of the room. Yep. Um, it's very, very difficult for people to get attention when Donald Trump is on the stage. <laughs> um, because, and, you know, it, one thing that, people have been saying about Trump, which I totally agree with. He, his campaign is much more disciplined it's than much better. Mm-hmm. His campaign. He, however, no. <laughs> is a lot crazier. Yes. Whether he's got, whether he's getting old, it's, whether he's got some dementia happening, et cetera. Mm-hmm. You, if you actually listen to him at one of these rallies, it's a ra- stream of consciousness mm-hmm. with, segues off into oh. outer space that makes no sense to any about anything and it so is. yeah it's that's hard, for it's sure hard to take him seriously i think he's worse yeah, i he think is. he's worse i think i think and i know look as you pointed out uh he brought in Susie wiles and chris lasavita two very serious people they're mm-hmm. not they're not jokers like a brad pascal or a Corey lewandowski right. um, or a steve bannon they were yeah. serious campaign people. They know what they're doing. They're operatives. Yeah. They, they're people like us, you know, they, we get it. Um, but I think that there's a degree to which, you know, no matter how good the management structure is, if the CEO is willing to go out and, you know, take his clothes right. off and run around the stage, you're not going to be able to run a disciplined campaign <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and that's no, what people, I don't want to see that. That's an image. No, I don't want to ever think about that image again. <laughs> we don't want to see that. No. <laughs> so, well, uh, Elaine Kmark, thank you so, so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate your time. I look forward to having you back on. Tell folks, uh, first off, where they can find you on social media and, and okay. uh, and and the Brookings election tracker. Yes, it's it's the Brookings presidential election presidential tracker. election tracker. Yeah. Check it out, folks. Watch the watch the race that way. Okay, I love it. I love it. Thank Thanks. you so much, Elaine. <laughs> so on the enemies list today is a returning favorite. It's Marge, the three toed, the, the 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 human sloth, Marjorie Taylor Green. Now look, folks, I have zero, and I do mean to say zero brief for Mike Johnson. If Mike Johnson were being eaten by wolves, I would throw more barbecue sauce on him. But the fact that Marjorie Taylor Greene is now trying to blow up Mike Johnson, uh, and, and, and on Friday decided she would make a move on trying to uh, use the rules that were put in the place uh, by 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 the now ex-speaker Kevin McCarthy that allowed the MAGA terrorists to blow him up anytime they wanted. The fact that that is um, her play at a moment where the country is in absolute um, uh, immediate peril of default and everything else because of shutting the government down with the last few bills in the shutdown package and because um, she's doing it uh, based purely on her own amusement and trying to get clicks and to raise money and to go on Fox about it puts her on this week's enemies list. 